And you know, next fight, no Ashkas this time. In fact, instead is going to be once again, or oh, was that Renke before? I don't remember exactly. So yeah, Skyrush and Renke, oh, yeah. Renke as Jade against Wabin as Taya and Commando as Croak. So Taya Croak's, oh boy. So the thing with Croak, it's interesting, of course, is Croak is a very stealthy hero. Croak is all about stealth. Like, and we do have the Camouflage Blade Flurry, flurry coming in here, so that's, we're gonna see a lot of Camouflage hits. Extra bit of damage. Okay, Wind Strike Stunning, Wahabin clearly wants to make sure that Skybrush getting close is going to be met with pain. Because that's not the only crowd control that she has, but definitely gonna be handy for extra crowd control. I mean, at this point, the Croak is the main crowd controller right now, and already Wahabin losing half their health. Or NK just focusing down on that nice tornado out of there, and both the blue team right next to each other. And that stun, the camouflage stun came out a little bit too late from Commando, unfortunately, so that did not manage to save their teammate. Now Commando in a 1v2 situation, trying to get all that toxin on there, get that healing going. I mean, of course, they have to wait for round two in order to get the extra healing battle right, but that is pretty much what they need. And miss on the ultimate. Not really sure what the point of that ultimate was. I mean, in general, Croak's ultimate is kind of a weird thing to begin with, because, of course, you can jump out of that. I mean, when someone hits you as Croak, just use a space ability. Any of your jumps, or if you have any other moves like Molten Fist that make you invincible and put you in the air, just use that. You will not take damage, provided you time it right. If you don't time it right, then obviously you'll take damage when you land. Once again, Skybrush really likes Blinding Light. A lot. Twin Strikes from Commando, and more Wind Strike healing. Well, Wind Strike healing. More Wind Strike battle rights for Wahabin. So Commando really wants to make sure that... I mean, they were using a fair amount of Frog Leap, so that makes sense that they wanted extra damage on it. Nice avoidance of the Lunar Strike there. And nice focusing down on Orenge. Took a lot of damage. And yeah, I should point out that Taya's boomerang does not count, does not trigger counter on the way back. It only triggers it on the way forward. Good camouflage stun in there. I mean, a little bit surprised Renke didn't just jump away, didn't automatically blast fault as soon as it saw camouflage get triggered, but I guess they figured it might have been going for Skybrush, and it is this time going for Skybrush. Skybrush, not Celestial splitting out of there once they saw that. Once again, that Luna Strike, very much on the edge. I've noticed Skybrush has been hitting the edge of the Luna Strike, hitting Commando. Now Commando, however, taking a huge amount of damage and probably going to go down. Arenke most likely going to see a snapshot come out there. Uh, no, no, just revolver shots. That's how they win. And now have been on their own, but in a decent health situation, actually. They can get a little bit more meter. And good dodge in the snipe. And very good, nice, nice extract there. Very good extract and into their ultimate. It's just going to be a matter of as many boomerangs as possible. And the ultimate shield works out nicely to deal with Jade's ultimate. And, ah, oh, got that orb. Oops. Ah, wrong one. Ah, whoops. Sorry. Didn't see that bar there. But yeah, it's like right before, seemed to get that orb, and then it was like, that's it. Not much they could do about that. So that round... This point, two for... I mean, okay, sorry. I spoiled the next ones, but yeah. Two for the next, so at this point, we're probably going to see... I'm guessing Sunrise Extra Healing. Blast full cooldown for our NK. Sunrise Extra Healing, most likely from Skybrush, and... Not sure what Red Team's going for, because the replay system does not quite work that way. I'm just glad that I can actually see the Battle Royce in the first place. Okay, Toxin Blade, Speed Increase, and Tornado Haste. And indeed, Illumination, Sunrise Healing, or Sunrise Extra Healing, and Self Healing. Which makes a lot of sense, because that last match got very close for Blue Team, but it was also just that as a super common thing to use. Now, good X Strike out of there. It looks like Stun's probably targeting Skybrush, but Skybrush, very nice Lustral Split to get out of that Stun range. That's the thing with Croak. You often see, if you're playing as Croak, if you go for Camouflage, your opponents are probably going to use some escape ability to get out of there when they see you go Camouflage. Because unless you're being tricky yourself, unless they know, oh, you're going to be tricky, they're figuring you're going straight for them. Why else would you be doing whatever you're doing? You're going to just make a beeline for them and hit them as soon as you can. Like, someone who really knows what they're doing will actually be paying attention to the timing and will escape the second or the frame that you would possibly hit them. So you got to be tricky about that. And this croak has been very straightforward. 
However, at the same time, blue team hasn't been dodging. It's a little bit difficult in a 2v2 situation to remember what to do in that. And we have the Astral Beam coming out here, which unfortunately, well, fortunately for Commando, but unfortunately for Skybrush, got knocked away by that Wind Bomb. And blue team holding the center, taking the center orb. And this is where we're going to see, oh, tried to go for this mirrorless material to get out of that Venom, I think. I'm not even sure if that's what they were trying to go for. Bit of a strange move. And we do see that healing coming into play for Skybrush into the ultimate, but unfortunately that Croak's going to just finish it off. Oh, never mind. Nice Lesser Strike away from the Camouflage. I mean, that's kind of telegraphed. But the Wind Bomb holding in. Luna Strike not managing to hit, and this gives Commander the perfect opportunity to just come in with a couple Frog Leaps. And not even going for the EX Wind Strike to win from Wahabin. And yes, I realize EX moves have their own names. It's just that not everyone even knows about EX moves in the first place. And it's like, I don't want to say EXQ, or in this case it would be EXQ. It's like, I don't want to say that. But it's like, if I say Celestial Rift, it's supposed to Celestial Split, or Crescent Great Gale, it's Crescent Strike. It's like, not everyone necessarily knows about EX moves, so I feel like saying EX, normal move, is probably going to be the most effective means of communication. I mean, if I'm wrong, please let me know, but as far as I... I'm just thinking it seems like it probably is the most effective way of doing it. People will probably know the standard move names, but not necessarily the EX move names. Anyhow, quick one v or quick double one v one going on here. Blue team finally meeting back up. Bit more damage dealt to blue than tread. Quite a bit more damage actually dealt to blue than tread. But what happened getting focused down, tornadoing out of there, and getting haste on top of that, which of course means more powerful boomerangs. And nice avoidance what RMK a little bit too close for Wahabin to get the perfect X strike on, which is fine. And nice dodge from Snipe. Nice blast fall away from the ultimate there from Croak. And another, and ultimate is actually ready. There it goes. Ultimate from RMK and Wahabin on point there with the tornado getting out of there. Because you want to do that. I mean, if you see anything like that coming out there, just escape. You're not going to dodge it. And some nice 1v1 action going on here, but a good frog leap finishing it off. I mean, at that point, stealth was already used. Pretty sure Blast Ball had been used recently enough. So, yeah, that that is basically not much left. There really wasn't much. The only thing I could think of maybe would have been a snapshot. Just to root down the croak, to root down Commando. But Commando was so close, even that would have been extremely risky. I mean, there was a timing where that would have worked. It looks like blue team gonna focus down Croak. Kinda curious if red team is up too, but unfortunately can't see that. Anyway, another Luna Strike missing. Good wind bomb combo to go. Very nice wind bomb combo from Wahabin. And that puts Skybrush down quite a bit in their HP totals. It's always the risky thing when you're playing a serious. And good, good steal on the center roar from Wahabin. And red team. Just going for all the health orbs. Nicely done. Stealing all the health orbs. Skybrush with the energy. Not sure. Probably going to go for the ultimate because they normally do. I haven't really seen them do a lot of Crescent Gales. Definitely no Celestial Rifts. And yeah, I'm going to start using the EX moves now. I don't know. Very few EX Crescent Strikes. No EX Crescent Split or Celestial Splits. So yeah, there's a direct comparison. There's some A-B testing there for you. I'm a bit surprised they haven't actually been using... Celestial Rift. Because, I mean, you charge your Crescent Strike when you do that. So it's like, you hit, and then you can just Celestial Split, or EX Celestial Split, Celestial Rift, whatever we're going to call it, away into something that causes you to bounce back, and then it gives you another charge, and then you get a counter, and then you get another charge, and it's like all these things. But finishing off with the Snipe, because Wahabin really had no easy way of getting back in there, not with a Jade just hanging out there, waiting for you to come out to snipe you, or disabling shot you, or whatever. Because Jade can do that. So that was that. Good job, Skybrush in this case. Yeah, I'm kind of picking these at random, so some of them are going to be wins, some of them are going to be losses. I don't really want to show all wins, obviously. For the, I mean, I thank you for the donation, but obviously I obviously don't want to show all the wins. Also, I am curious about the times on those replays, because I mentioned before, like, I don't know how old they are, and it looks like they're actually only a day or two old. They're actually from, from very recent play sessions. So the next one is, let's do, 
Ooh, this will be interesting. This one has an Iva in it. Now, I know I mentioned I made Jade. I do main Jade. But when I'm not maining Jade, Iva's pretty fun. Because, I mean, Iva's pretty much the damaging ranged character. And hasn't loaded in yet. No, let's just pull it forward a bit. Hmm. Alright, so we have... So once again, Charge Crescent Strike for Skybrush. We have... Okay, extra... Extra damage... Well, damage from Zap. So shielding extra damage. Searing Flight Ignite, because we would Ashka and... Right, Ashka and Shifu. We have Dembo style playing Ashka and Midas playing Shifu with Lucy playing Iva and of course Skybrush on Sirius. Ashka with the Searing Flight Ignite and... Midas with the Impale Heal. Those are very typical battle rights. Pretty much everyone goes for those. Like, those are the defaults. This is a very typical match so far. Nice little tractor beam from Lucy there. Lucy playing Iva in order to not be confusing. Because, you know, who'd mix that up? And it's double 1v1 Skybrush. Having a bit of an easier time than Lucy. Lucy forced out of there. And nice split there. Flame Strike into Ultimate and good Sunrise coming in. This sh ooh. It would, of course, Dembo style doing a good job pushing back Skybrush with Skybrush with an ultimate to get the last laugh. And working a block away, Midas there, because Midas is not being nice to Lucy. Because of course they wouldn't be. That is kind of the point of the game, is to kill the person on the other team. And Midas is doing a pretty good job of that. Skybrush coming in to save the day though, and that wins it for the blue team. I mean, that was fairly typical. Blue team didn't actually manage to hold the center that well, though. Red team did have center, but it just... I felt like they were pulling away from it a little bit. Especially, like, Dembo style doing an ultimate right into the center here. That was, like... Where's that ultimate? It was right here. It's, like, start. near the start, too, but it's, like, just coming in, and it was... That ultimate... When that ultimate dropped, it was... Yeah, it put Dembo style into a very, very uncomfortable position. Because, I mean, it's just Dembo style coming in here, trying to deal with this... I mean, it's a nice stun, nice ultimate, but then they're so out of position that it's like, as soon as the counter is triggered, they're completely destroyed. Anyway, round two. Skyrush going for Celestial the Celestial Split blinding again. And... Lucy going for all the zaps, all the shielding, which pretty much makes sense because they're being focused down hard. And Midas wants those weapon counters on counter, or weapon sh weapon charges on counter, which I don't think a counter has actually been triggered for Midas so far. Shifu's counters are kind of, well, can be kind of predictable. There's something that people watch out for. It's kind of like Jade Snipe. You really want to be mindful of Shifu's counters. You want to be mindful of everybody's counters, but Shifu is... Oh, never, never mind. There it goes, getting triggered and didn't quite pay off, though. Midas didn't manage to get the hit in. Blue team out of center, red team taking the rune, but blue team still managing to get a little bit of health back. Or at least, Skybrush managing to. Lucy pretty much up front taking all the damage, and double counter triggers going off there. Both Sirius and Chief are getting their counters off. But at this point, Skybrush kind of needing to fall back. Can't really. An ultimate at this point is going to be very risky. They do go for it, they do take the center orb, giving them a little bit more health, and nice also spirit to get rid of Ashka. Luna Strike not managing to do the trick. I'm noticing that Skybrush has been hitting the edge of the Luna Strike. They've been targeting the edge of the Luna Strike on the people rather than straight center. I'm not sure if that's. If there's a strategic consideration that they're expecting to be juked out of it. Or if it's just an accuracy thing. I just. I've noticed that in a lot of the game. That seems to be a common thing. Is that Luna Strike tends to miss and it's like it's, it's targeted kind of like the edge or maybe halfway to the edge. Anyway, good job there. Blue team taking that out regardless of missing Lunar Strikes. Skybrush once again. Not really so much saving the day. It seems like that extra Blast Shield damage for the Blast Shield battle rights of so Zap took more damage. That seemed to help a fair bit for Lucy there. Who is, of course, playing Iva. Lucy didn't really want to be herself. It was kind of an identity crisis. She really just wanted to kill things. She was so pissed off at getting focused down. Just wanted to shoot everything. So she became Iva. Anyway, Kunju healing and Flame Strike healing as well, so Red Team going for all the healing. And Lucy is going for pure Zap build. Zap everything, and there we go. Nice charge payoff there. Dealing a lot of damage to Skybrush. And nice counter against the charge there. Another counter coming in for. Well, actually, at this point, honestly, Midas has taken very little damage. 
and Lucy is taking a lot of damage, trying to get their way out of it, oil the way out of it, but focus down hard. And at this point, Skybrush has been torn apart by range attacks, bit by bit. Dembo style, just dealing little bits of damage here and there, but it's really adding up. And nice attempt to counter there, I mean, from Midas. Good counter, good proper counter from Skybrush. And at least, I mean, blue team got the rune, but even now, it's still an uphill struggle. I mean, the hard part is really that Skybrush can't really push forward. They basically got to be hanging around protecting Lucy. That's their game plan at this point. They got to protect Lucy as much as possible because if Lucy goes, then... And Skybrush now on their own because Lucy gone means that Skybrush is now having to deal with basically everything. And ultimate, countered by ultimate. Not ideal. I mean, that's the thing with Ashka. It's like, their ultimate comes up. You can't do anything that puts you in a in any locked position. As soon as you lock yourself down, you're done. Ash is gonna get you, and whatever you're trying to do is gonna be cancelled. It is very difficult to deal with. I mean, of course, once that happens, if you haven't been too locked down, then you're fine. Or if you lock down Ashka first, then great. Like, nice Luna Strike on Ashka, lock that down, and then just go. And Extra charge for Midas. Midas is really going for that charges. I mean, they have the Kunju charges as well, so Kunju and one hit of their main, main Spear Slash, and there they go. They just impale four charges. And now, wow, I mean, for obvious reasons, Nepo style being focused down hard by both people, because that ultimate. I mean, Dembo style, you know, Ashka doesn't have a huge amount of burst damage other than the ultimate, but that ultimate, and continuing to focus it down, Uh, at this point, I mean, Midas trying to save their teammate and actually doing a pretty good job distracting Blue Team, allowing Dembo Style some room to heal up. Probably possible. I mean, they didn't get the orbs, oddly enough, but they could have. And Midas going for a counter right after the ultimate's done, which I'm pretty sure Iva's ultimate is counterable. And ultimate, this is what I mean by don't get locked down. Lucy getting hit by that ultimate after being locked down, and nice counter coming in from Skybrush. Avoiding the flame strike entirely. And oh, that would have been a perfect time for a celestial rift rather than a celestial split. And Skybrush at this point desperately healing themselves. I mean, at least they can. And ultimate coming out here, Astral Beam, not able to do a lot of damage, partly thanks to Shield and partly thanks to Searing Flight. But at least it's a 1v1. Skybrush has a bit of a way out of this. Being a 1v1, it is gonna be a little bit more. Now, it's not that much easier. This is still a tricky situation. Both players are countering. And unfortunately, that one counter not getting triggered, which really didn't make a huge difference. I mean, there wouldn't have been enough damage to do it. Really, I mean, with the whirlwind coming out, and not really a whole lot that would stun. Like, yeah, the best they could do is Fading Snare. Or, obviously, Lunar Strike. But the best thing to do is getting a Fading Star and Prismatic Strike and just staying out of the way. And the Celestial Split was just used, so the Whirlwind couldn't really be avoided that easily. At this point, Luna Strike getting uh, hit hitting Immaterial. I mean, I feel like... I almost feel like Luna Strike is better used on Ashka. Because there's so many ways that, that she can just avoid things. Like the Fleet Foot. I mean, obviously, Kunju's not going to help because it's a counter, but Fleet Foot can just get them out of there. And it's just, bam, immaterial. Speaking of getting out of there, nice job getting out of there, Skybrush. And blue team, very confidently taking the center. The red team rapidly just took all the damage. I mean, that was... That was huge. Like, you go down, it's like the amount of damage that was taken for them is just... Wait, too far forward. Now like you go for full health here, and it's just... I mean, very rapidly, Skybrush ripping apart... Well, ripping apart Dembo style. Minus getting torn apart by Lucy... And the are taking some damage. It's just counters into shots, like constant counters into shots. And more counters into more shots. And that's just on top of the ultimate. I mean, that is pretty much everything you need to see there. Like, all the red team just being torn apart. That's the scary thing about Iva. Like, yeah, shotgun's kind of close to range, but if she gets close enough, and when you're dealing, when you're melee hero, that's a tough thing to deal with. So blue team with another... Well, single ultimate out of Astral Beam, forcing the red team to the north side, giving Iva a nice chance to split up the red team. Getting flanked, however, and 
good flame strike, but not quite enough. Very good ultimate. At this point, the tables might have turned slightly. Blue team getting hit hard. Skybar's still at a very healthy health total, though. And good spell block. Pretty much just avoiding anything, any counters or anything like that. But perfect firewall as well from Dembo style. They're still in a very tough position. And using their space to get in, using Searing Blade to get in is very risky. Trying to throw the firebolts, all the firebolts they can. But a good incapacitate from there. And thing got to worry about with Iva, she has the incapacitate options as well. Tractor... Whoa, was that... Tractor moving to Crescent Gale? I mean, that was... Well, first off, yeah, the disabling shot thing, but... Yeah, pretty much. Tractor beam into Crescent Gale. Nice EX shot from Skybrush. Okay, so they are using the EXM one. Not using a lot of the EX space, the Celestial Rift. But hey, that still worked out. Nice nice combo there with the Tractor Beam, though. That was well done. I like that. That was a good combo to see. So anyway, the last game of the night is going to be, obviously, with Skybrush. And it's going to be... Oh, what do I want to do? I hate that I can see the score. I just... I'll do the one they played... I don't know. Okay, I want to do one that has... different setup. Still a Baco. Oh no, never mind. Not a Baco. There is a Baco in the opposite team. Baco and Paloma, Vlaeus as Paloma, and Brigas as Baco against Skybrush as Sirius, and Songs as Crook. Yo. Greetings. So we have... This map again. So, I mean, given the composition, we're probably going to see. I mean, obviously, blue team is going to be very upfront. Most likely, what's going to happen is Baco right, or sorry, Brigus right up next to Vileus, trying as hard as possible to keep Vileus from getting hurt. Just bulwarking and tanking damage in general, because I mean, Vileus obviously doesn't want to be too upfront. And right away, we have songs coming in there. Very quickly trying to get in the way of Vileus and Brigus because, I mean, if they don't, well, Brigus gets healed and Vileus gets healed and it's very difficult to deal with. Unfortunately for Songs, Vileus can very quickly panic either of them because both Skybrush and Songs are pure melee heroes, so nice little spirit rift there and they get turned away if they don't have the right timing. They don't call it. Actually, I should point out also other side healing. That is what Vileus has gone for here. Brigus went for just. Oh, well, shield dash incapacitate. Anything to have. Splitting with blue team again, but blue team right now with a nice advantage. However, we still have Vileus with a lot of HP. And interesting counter timing. Not really sure what the logic with that one was. And at this point, Skybrush once again getting hit by that panic. And Luna's dragging in here, so... Ooh. That was not ideal. Shield Dash out of Ancestral Spirit. So Briggs kind of kind of stopped Vileus from dealing the damage they needed to deal. And at this point, Skybrush trying to go for that center. Nice Lunar Strike into getting that center orb. Unfortunately, not a whole lot they can do to avoid what's coming next. I mean, both Spirit Guide and the ultimate coming in from Briggs. Finish that off. Very strong start. Not as defensive as I expected, though. Vileus definitely being very forward. Not really relying on Briggs to bulwark stuff from them. Just... Staying forward, not really worrying. Anything gets close, just Spirit Rift, and everyone will panic. Well, everyone else will panic, so that she doesn't have to panic. And now, healing all around. Black healing, Ghost Wolf healing, Toxin healing increase, and Celestial Split Blinding. Because Skybrush always goes with that. Which actually, in this case, is kind of handy, keeping Paloma blind. And getting surrounded, although other siding out of there. And that's a big thing to bear in mind. The other side battle right, the other side healing battle right, is a big deal. Given that other side is a massive escape move for Paloma, I mean, Song's getting just sandwiched between red team. That's not what they want at all. And it's really difficult for Skybrush to deal with that. I mean, they can Lunar Strike, and they have. But it's like Lunar Strike to get both enemy team members. That's when you start seeing Lunar Strikes away from the center. And Skybrush, man, trying to go for that Celestial Gale to do anything, to get the center warp, really. But unfortunately, not enough. Getting crushed with basically no health lost from the red team. I mean, unfortunately, Songs really got sandwiched in. That took so much health off. Like, I mean, Songs had that I had kind of the right idea, and Blue Team stick more or less together, but it's like right here, right here, we see Songs getting sandwiched away, trying to get out of there in their escape attempt. 
also getting sandwiched away again, losing half their health in the process. And then getting peeled away by the ultimate. Anyway, on to round three. So, once again, has Sunrise healing for Skybrush. And we have Frog Leap healing for Song. Not really, I mean, they're really going Lone Wolf, so it kind of makes sense they're going to do that. And Spirit Rift movement speed, so Vlaeus, they're very comfortable being up front. Like, they know what to do. Spirit Rift, run out of there. Their opponents are panicking. Other side, run out of there. Heal yourself in the process. Like, they've got that sorted. Vlaeus knows their Paloma, apparently. And nice blind coming in there, but once again, another Spirit Rift coming in. Which keeps getting procced. I mean, it just keeps getting triggered. Like, bear in mind, for those of you not aware, Spirit Rift doesn't have to cause panic. It causes a spell block, and if you use any abilities during the spell block, you get panicked. Oh man, that was that was some combo there. That was a massive combo coming in there. But blue team managing to keep their position a bit better, really focusing down Vallejo's, forcing Briggs to just run around the entire place. I mean, Briggs can't really do a whole lot to move. Incapacitating Vallejo's to get them out of the way. Nice use of deceit there. I would have personally incapacitated Briggs, but I think it was really just a matter of take the target you can get rather than the target you'd love to get. And there we go, that's to see on Briggus getting them out of the way, incapacitating them, allowing Vilius to be targeted without Briggus getting in the way. Nice Luna Strike, allowing for good setup, good healing. And the ultimate Venom, nice leap out of there. Perfect time for the Valiant Leap to get away from that Venom. And good ball work. I mean, took a lot of damage in the process. That was still a huge amount of damage being taken, probably like 50, 60 damage. I mean... Song is doing a pretty good, doing a very nice job this time, just dealing with everything, and good teamwork there. Getting, is that, they had the energy for ultimate. Yeah, yeah, Skyward had the energy for ultimate first. But still, good use of Deceit, Incapacitate, just to set up. And that's what you want to do with Incapacitate, especially in a 2v1 situation. In a 1v2, obviously, it's the opposite. You want to just make it a 1v1. But in a 2v1 situation, that is the that is the use of Incapacitate you want to use. So, let's see how this goes here. Another round coming up. Blue team getting some momentum back. Getting their spirits back up. I mean, they know they can win. They know they have some chance here. They have to focus down Vallejo. I mean, they have to keep Briggs out of the fight. Focus down Vallejo. Make sure that Vallejo is the one that's taking most of the damage. And Celestial Split. Blinding both of them, actually. In a counter into another weak... I mean, that is a very nice focus. And a petrified. I mean, keeping them both together and all the statuses. On top of that toxin. And Wow, Vallejo actually... Okay, just... I'm thinking... Did Vallejo... Rage quit at that point? Because that'd be weird. Now, finally, Red Team pushing the pressure off. Vallejo is getting a nice spirit rift there. Getting Blue Team out of there. And by the way, pro tip, you can't counter aerial... You can't counter area affecting attacks. Counter doesn't work against those. Actually, that's not just a pro tip. That's actually meaningfully useful information. And another nice Valiant Leap. Briggus knows their Valiant Leap. Well, the, I mean, the Venom is there, but they know... Pay attention. Use the use Valiant Leap when you can. And we should be seeing, there's the ultimate. Catching Skybrush, rather surprisingly. But still, focus down. Especially when all the stunning and infestating being, held, being handled. Just no easy way to deal with that. So, blue team takes another round. I mean, really, it was all that beginning thing here with... Right at the start, with this fight. Like the, well, the Petrify was the last bit. But, I mean, right at the very, very, very start. You have Blind Spear Rift, pushing them together into, I mean, the weakening, into the Lunar Strike. I mean, into the Venom on top of that. So it's like all this damage and healing, all this stuff happening, all at once, bringing Vallejo's down to have health. Briggs wasn't really damaged, but it didn't really matter. Vallejo's goes down, Briggs is basic. I mean, they have, what, Bulwark? Valiant Leap? I mean, they can kind of get out of there. But they're relying a lot on Vallejo's to both crowd control and heal. A lot. I mean, Spirit Rift has been extremely effective for Vallejo's right now. And nice dodge for that Valiant Leap from Songs. I mean, Songs did a good job do dodging there, I should say. And once again, focusing down Vallejos. I mean, this has definitely turned into a match. And good good trigger on the counter. I mean, the counter was a little bit, well, easy, I guess, to deal with. But it was still a trigger, so good job. And this point, Petrif well, Luna Strike hitting Briggs, and that's exactly what they want. Of course, that's always what they want. And there's Ancestral Spirit. This is going to be a problem. I mean, mostly Songs took the damage. Skybrush didn't take much damage. Managed to escape. Songs took a fair bit more damage. But once again, another Luna Strike on Briggus. And Vilea is forced to other side out of there. So using up their other side. 
Certainly stopping Briggers from being out of the side, though I don't think they care. And Spirit Rift coming in a little early. Didn't quite know the timing that was going to come in from Songs. But a good Spirit Rift to get away from the Venom. However, Astral Beam still getting rid of Valeus. Skybrush at very low health, and Briggus able to get rid of Skybrush very easily, and at this point it's going to be much tougher. Briggus at nearly full health, and Songs almost, well, a little, little under half health. Going to try to incapacitate, get, then heal up. Oh no, what? They're not going for the healing orbs. That was surprising. I think they wanted to keep the stun. Because, of course, after the seat, you then get a camouflage stun. I think they wanted to have that available. But, unfortunately, they didn't quite have it. And Briggus taking the center orb. Probably going to try to ultimate. Oh, right next to the wall. If Briggus goes to that ultimate, it's... And there it is. Catching songs. Track that again without actually, you know, falling behind. Dragon Songs, another Deceit coming in. Good timing! But the thing is, I think at this point, Songs really needs to be using Incapacitates to get healing orbs. And Songs getting a bit of health, but far more health is going to Briggus. And Briggus taking that orb, that'll seal the game. Like, at this point, the arena's gonna get so small, you can no longer get green orbs. It's too far away. The rune's the only source of healing, and at this point, Briggus has had two and one... A couple more hits, and they're going to have an ultimate from Briggus, and that's going to do the game in. I mean, that's what the incapacitate would be for at that point, is incapacitate into, into dealing with the center orb. And center orb finally going in for for Stongs, but that's it. An ultimate's going to come in from Briggus anytime. It doesn't even have to. Briggus on the last patch of decent ground that isn't going to kill them, takes that match at the very last second. But yeah, like two orbs going to Briggus, or two runes rather going to Briggus. That is a huge deal. Well, that's 100 energy right there because it was a 1v1 situation. And all that health as well. It's like, sheesh, that was so much. Very good matches though. I think that's going to be it for me tonight. So I hope you enjoyed that. Thank you once again very much, Skybrush, for giving me the replays. Since I've now found you just ask people directly and they give you replays usually. So yeah, that was great. Thank you very much. And now I have a lot of replays to work from. So. Thank you, Scabbers, for giving me the replays. Thank you all for watching. And have a good night, everyone.